intellectual property is all around us. Bago pa man umabot sa iyo ang episode na ito, kapatid, ay maraming layers na ng intellectual property at intellectual property rights ang pinagdaanan nito. Nagsisimula ako sa pagsusulat ng draft ng script ng video na ito sa Microsoft Word. The script itself, or what I'm saying right now, is covered by copyright. Sa parehong paraan na mayroong intellectual property rights ang Microsoft sa kanilang software. Pagkatapos ng editing ng draft, ililipat ko naman ang aking script sa final draft 11. Ito ay isang script writing software kung saan mailalagay ko ang aking notes para alam ng animator at editor kung ano ang gusto kong makita sa screen. Ang final draft ay isang software na pagmamayari ng cast and crew. For a particular amount of money, they are licensing it to me. Tumatakbo ang Final Draft 11 sa Mac OS Catalina na isang OS na pagmamayari naman ng Apple. Hindi ko ito binabayaran pero kasama ito sa pagbili ko ng MacBook Pro. Ang OS na ito ay protektado ng intellectual property rights gaya ng copyright at trade secrets. Ang mismong laptop naman ay covered ng patents at trademarks. Sa iyong panonood ng video na ito, malamang ay nakita mo ang isang link sa isang social networking site o social media platform. Protektado sila ng copyright at trademarks. Pagdating mo naman sa YouTube, mapapanood mo ito gamit ang kanilang proprietary video streaming software at mga algorithm na maaaring mag-recommend sa'yo na panoorin mo ito. Malamang ay pinapanood mo ito sa isang cellphone na umaandar sa Android OS or iOS. Parehong covered din yan ng intellectual property rights. Masalimuot ang mundo ng intellectual property law pero isa ito sa mga naging paborito kong subject noon sa law school. In the next few minutes, I want to share with you a broad overview of intellectual property law. All of this and more coming right up! Hi, my name is Lex and welcome to Lex in Motion. In this channel, I'll be helping you build your competence, confidence, and capability in law school. Start today by hitting the subscribe button below. New episodes are posted every Friday. When it comes to intellectual property rights in the Philippines, the governing law is the Republic Act No. 8293 or the Intellectual Property Code of the Philippines. Section 4 of the IP Code provides that definitions 4.1, the term intellectual property rights, consists of A. Copyright and related rights B. Trademarks and service marks C. Geographic indications D. Industrial designs E. Patents F. Layout designs, topographies of integrated circuits. G. Protection of undisclosed information. For tonight's episode, I want us to talk about copyright and related rights, trademarks and service marks, and patents. The law here does not really define for us intellectual property. Sa halip ang ating batas ay nag-enumerate lang ng mga bagay na pasok sa intellectual property rights. Simulan natin kapatid sa pagtalakay kung ano ba muna ang intellectual property. The World Intellectual Property Organization defines intellectual property as something that refers to creations of the mind such as inventions, literary and artistic works, designs and symbols, names and images used in commerce. Again, what we have here is another enumeration, but this definition lays down the foundation. Intellectual property is intangible property, meaning it is not something that we can see, touch, taste, or feel. The identity and value of this intangible property is based on an idea or set of ideas. Simulan natin ngayon sa copyright. Ang malinaw na kaibahan ng copyright sa ibang intellectual property rights ay hindi mo kailangang magparehistro bago ka bigyan ng protection sa ilalim ng ating batas. When someone writes a song or draws a cartoon of a fat bald man who talks about law school, these intellectual creations are protected right at the very moment they are written, drawn, or animated. Ayon kay Professor Ernesto Salao, copyright is a legal concept that gives the creator of an original work exclusive right to it, usually for a limited period of time. Mula nung sinabi yan ni Atty. Salao ay protektado na siya ng batas. May karapatan siyang ipalimbag yan at gawing bahagi ng isang libro. Karapatan din niya na i-attribute sa kanya ang definition na yan. Isinulat ko man yung definition na yan sa aking notebook noong bar review ay hindi sa akin ang definition na yan. When it comes to copyright, Atty. Salao's book in our example will be protected from the date of creation up to 50 years from his death. 
sa aking akda na dekada, 10 life lessons from 10 years in law school. Ito ay pseudonymous, meaning hindi natin alam ang tunay kong pangalan. Ang protection ng batas sa ganitong mga akda ay 50 years from the date of publication o from 2021 to 2071. However, if for whatever reason the author's identity is revealed, then there is absolutely no doubt that he is the author of the pseudonymous work, then the work shall be protected from the moment of creation up to 50 years from the time of his death. Ang trademark naman kapatid ay inilatag sa atin ng Supreme Court sa isang lumang kaso ng Arsesans versus Selecta Biscuit Company. This case was decided in the 1960s and it's still persuasive today. The Supreme Court, speaking through Justice Bautista Angelo, declared that a trademark is a distinctive mark of authenticity through which the merchandise of a particular producer or manufacturer may be distinguished from that of the others. And its sole function is to designate distinctively the origin of the products to which it is attached. Ibig sabihin kapatid, din nilalagay ang trademark ng isang kumpanya sa kanilang mga produkto bilang katunayan na ito nga ay kanilang produkto. Inilalagay ito bilang tanda na iba ang kanilang produkto sa produkto ng ibang mga kumpanya. Ang check na lo logo ng Nike ay patunay na sila nga ang gumawa ng Air Jordan 1 noong mga panahong patpatin pa si Michael Jordan. Ang mansanas na may konting bawas ay rehistradong trademark ng Apple at ito ay katunayan na ang iPhone na gamit mo ngayon ay kanilang produkto at hindi ito clone. When a company affixes its trademark upon a product like a microphone, a tumbler, or a bag of coffee beans, it is in effect guaranteeing that the product is authentic and it is their genuine product, that the product meets a certain standard of quality, and that they are advertising the articles they symbolize. Trademarks differ from copyright in that they need to be registered in order for the protection of the law to kick in. The first person to register a particular trademark is usually granted the right to use it, except when the trademark is confusingly similar to an older registered trademark. When the trademark infringes upon another company's intellectual property or the trademark is non-registrable, usually kapag bastos o generic ang trademark. Ang isa pang kaibahan ng trademark sa copyright ay pwedeng ma-renew ang trademark. Tulad ng ating mga passport, 10 years ang validity ng trademark at pwedeng mag-renew even before the registration actually expires. Finally, we have patents. Section 21 of Republic Act No. 8293 or the Intellectual Property Code of the Philippines teaches us that a patentable invention is any technical solution of a problem in any field of human activity which is new, involves an inventive step, and is industrially applicable shall be patentable. It may be or may relate to a product or process or an improvement of any of the foregoing. For an invention to be patentable, the requisites are number one, novelty, two, inventive step, three, industrial applicability. For an invention to be novel, it must not in any way form part of prior art. Prior art is anything that is already available elsewhere in the world. Prior art also covers anything that has been previously registered as patentable in our country. The second requisite inventive step means that the subject of the patent is not obvious to someone who is skilled in the same line or industry as that of the inventor. If it is obvious or it is a mere discovery of a new form or new property of a pre-existing substance, then there is no inventive step. Finally, and for me, this is the most important. The invention must have some industrial applicability. If the invention cannot be used in any industry, then it also cannot be registered. Para mabigyan ka ng protection sa iyong invention, kapatid, kailangan ito ay bago at meron kang moment of genius na hindi nakita ng ibang inventor at ang iyong produkto ay mapapakinabangan sa tunay na buhay. Sa ilang taong nakalipas ay may mga matatalinong tao na nakaimbento ng rice transplanter o isang makinang idinudugtong sa normal na hand tractor at kusa itong maglilikas ng mga tumubong binhi ng palay. Kaya nitong gawin sa isa o dalawang oras ang pagtatanim ng ilang magsasaka. Sa attachment na ito ay sadyang magiging biro na ang pagtatanim ng palay. 
mula sa halaman na balimbing ay nakagawa na rin ang ilang matatalinong Pilipino ng coating o substance na maaaring magpatagal sa buhay ng ating mga gulay. This invention effectively extends the shelf life of vegetables, helping farmers in distant areas bring their goods to the market and help us consumers enjoy fresher vegetables for much longer. These inventions are made possible through the Department of Science and Technology or DOST, particularly the Technology Application and Promotion Institute or TAPI. The TAPI is the implementing arm of the DOST in promoting the commercialization of technologies and in marketing the services of the other operating units of the department. They undertake contract research, particularly at pilot plant and semi-commercial stage. They also provide technical consultancy including engineering design services, patenting, and licensing services. The TAPI also assists technology generators, inventors, and researchers avail of the laboratories and other facilities of the research and development institutes including DOST regional offices and other government agencies, offices, and instrumentation. They find ways to connect venture financing companies with inventors and technology generators. Next week, they will be celebrating a huge milestone in intellectual property in the Philippines. Their activity is dubbed Week-Long Accomplishment and Culminating Activity of Special Projects or WAKAS. WAKAS features a lot of activities including the Science Summit for the Youth and the awarding of this year's Best Commercialization Story. One of their activities that I want to be part of this their webinar on intellectual property rights and IP valuation. IP valuation is a topic that's not covered in law school and it's very interesting because how do you put a price tag on an idea, an invention, or an intellectual creation. Register for the event using the links in the description down below. Thank you so much for watching. Like and share this video for Good Law School Carmine. I will see you on the first day of the Wakas webinar on intellectual property.